Hi, my name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO and founder of Third Stage Consulting, an independent digital transformation consulting firm, and wanted to chat today about what to do and how to upgrade from SAP ECC or an older legacy version of SAP upgrading to S4 HANA, the newer version of the flagship SAP product. And there's some things that are unique to upgrading from an old version of SAP to a new, newer version. And there's some other things that you want to keep in mind that are relevant, whether you're implementing another uh, solution outside the SAP suite or some other type of uh, ERP or CRM system. But to start, the first thing that we recommend doing as part of your SAP upgrade is to first of all, understand what went well and where you could best optimize the current use of SAP. That's oftentimes a good place to start is to understand uh, where are we not getting optimal benefits from the system? Uh, what are some of the lessons learned from the initial implementation we did 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, however long it was, and really taking those and building those, incorporating those into our plan going forward. Uh, that's the first thing and, and a good kind of baseline place to start. The second thing is to understand and look at what is the maturity of the software we have now versus the maturity of S4 HANA. What I mean by that is ECC, R3, some of these old SAP legacy products have been around forever um, since I started uh, in the ERP space, or pretty close to the time I started in the ERP space 20 years ago. Um, during that time, over the last couple of decades, those products have been evolving and you know, billions of dollars of R&D has been spent on making those products stable, more robust, deeper functionality, broader functionality, that sort of thing. And with S4 HANA, that's not the case. The product hasn't been around for long enough to have that same type of R&D focus. And at the same time, it's almost a, a complete rewrite of the software and, and a completely new version of the flagship technology in a way that we haven't seen before in the SAP ecosystem. So that's the, the second thing is understanding the reality of what you're going to get with S4 HANA and the maturity of the functionality of that technology versus the maturity of the technology you may have had and be used to with ECC. I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing, but it's just important to recognize what exactly that looks like and where the gaps are and um, managing expectations accordingly and also managing expectations accordingly for what you're going to get and how you're going to fill in some of the gaps with what you might be missing uh, with, with S4 HANA. The third thing that comes to mind and is kind of along those same lines of, of what I just mentioned with the, the maturity of the software is also understanding the flexibility of the software, especially if you're going with the cloud offering or the cloud version of S4 HANA. Um, what does that mean in terms of the flexibility for your business processes and your technology? Now SAP, for better or for worse, doesn't have the best reputation and isn't best known for the most flexible software, but there's a certain amount of flexibility that you, you um, have with an on-premise solution that you start to lose a little bit of when you look to uh, cloud deployments. Although I will say with S4 HANA, and SAP, they're one of the few vendors out right now that are still promoting a multiple, uh, a multitude of deployment options, ranging from on-prem to cloud and private cloud uh, solutions. So that does provide more flexibility than you would have otherwise. But there, there is a change there that's that's important to be aware of, both in terms of defining what your costs are going to be, what your risks are, and what your potential business benefits might be. The fourth thing to do when getting ready for an upgrade from ECC or R3 up to S4 HANA is to define and recognize how big of a change are you really willing to make. With S4 HANA comes some pretty breakthrough types of technologies, things with uh, things like machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, things of that nature, and that's that's kind of quantum leap types of improvements that you may or may not be used to. At the same time, your organization may not be ready to take those types of changes on, or maybe it is, but regardless of what you're going to do, you just have to recognize how big of a change are we really willing to make, make how much do we want to grow into the S4 HANA software, and how much are we going to take on right now, and, and really plan accordingly and have a, a strong strategy and deployment plan in place that, that takes those transformation factors into account. And then finally is to understand the impact on people. So your answer to that fourth question of how big of a jump are we really willing to take will ultimately feed you the answers you need for how, what the impact to people are. So what, how, do, how, does, how do individual work groups look different now versus how they're going to look in the future? Uh, how, how do individual processes and transactions and overall roles and responsibilities 
we need to understand how that all looks different in our current state versus what it's going to look like in the future. And we need to build a strong organizational change and transformation program that supports what exactly that looks like. So one of the common challenges or the common pitfalls that, that we see with upgrades to S4 and HANA is people think that, well, since we're already using an old version of SAP, how hard can it be to do an upgrade to S4 and HANA? And so that gap or that jump from ECC or especially R3 up to S4 and HANA is a bigger leap than many people recognize. So it's really important to, to understand where are those leaps going to happen? How are we going to help people get from point A to point B? And be realistic about what it's going to take to, to drive that cultural adoption of some of those changes. So it's important not to fall into that trap of assuming that it's not going to be much of a change just because you're using an older version of SAP. So those are the five things that we'd recommend keeping in mind as you look at how we're going to upgrade from ECC or R3 up to SAP S4 HANA and some of the ways to, to further build out the focus in those five areas I just mentioned here over these last few minutes. First is to um, go through a kind of a formalized implementation readiness approach where you address those five areas. And I would suggest doing that prior to pulling the trigger and starting the actual implementation. I would go through an implementation readiness stage where you're defining what our business processes are going to be, what where, what, and where are we going to deploy the, the technologies, how are we going to deploy the technologies, what does the time, cost, and risk look like. All that stuff needs to be defined up front so that you have a clear business blueprint for how you're going to move forward with S4 HANA and, and move into that, that new environment. Um, another thing we recommend doing in order to address those five things we mentioned here is to identify where your system integrator strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, every third party partner you work with and yourselves internally has strengths and weaknesses. So it's important to recognize where those weaknesses are and how we can fill those gaps. Uh, one example is in the way of, of organizational change. Uh, typically system integrators are very good at kind of the tactical um, organizational change when it comes to training and user end user adoption. But there's that more strategic level too, as far as how do we drive cultural transformation? How do we define our new uh, operating model? Those are typically gaps that system integrators don't do well. And so how are we going to fill that gap? And that's an area that the third stage helps our clients with when they're working with some of those, those big system integrators. So that's, that's another area is look at what the gaps are with your, your preferred system integrator partner is. And, and a, th a third thing might be if you haven't already pick who the system integrator is going to be or the system integrators in some cases. And then uh, finally, uh, how are we going to manage quality assurance on the, throughout the implementation and manage risks and ensure that we have that business integrator role filled someone that can translate from what's happening on the technology front to what the strategic needs of the organization are, making sure those two things stay in sync throughout the transformation. And again, that's another role that we fill at third stage. So uh, hopefully this helps. Uh, I think the key things are to uh, set the tempo for this project. It's in the upgrade, not under emphasize or understate the amount of change that you're going to go through as a result of the uh, transformation and making sure that you have a solid QA and implementation readiness plan in place before you move forward. So I hope this helps uh, as you plan for your upgrade from an older version of SAP up to S4 HANA. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have questions and also feel free to download our guide to a successful SAP S4 HANA implementation, which you can download by clicking on the link in the description field below on the YouTube video here. So hope you all have a great day. Hope this is helpful and look forward to chatting with you soon. Take care.